This thromboxin A2 is actually synthesized from platelets. It's actually synthesized from platelets. Whereas PGI2 is actually synthesized from the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells. Now aspirin, how this platelet is going to synthesize it? Again with the help of cyclooxygenase enzymes. No major doubt in it. We need cyclooxygenase enzymes in both of these agents for synthesis of this prostaglandin I2 and also for thromboxin A2. Now you give aspirin and this aspirin is going to cause inhibition of this. Please remember this is a non-competitive and irreversible inhibitor, right? Aspirin is a non-competitive irreversible inhibitor of the cyclooxygenase enzyme which is there in platelet cyclooxygenase enzyme which is there in endothelial cells. Now you have to remember one important concept that endothelial cells and we have major difference between the vascular endothelial cells and the platelets and that is these endothelial cells which we have drawn also has a nucleus inside it. Endothelial cells also has a nucleus inside it which means even if we non-competitively and irreversibly inhibit cyclooxygenase enzyme by aspirin, these endothelial cells has the capacity to resynthesize the same enzymes. Resynthesize cyclooxygenase enzymes and we can resynthesize this prostaglandin I2 but that is not going to be seen with platelets. Why? Because platelets are, yeah, platelets does not contain a nucleus. So this is a mnemonic which I had. So if you had any other better mnemonics, you can go for it. PC grabs two cigarettes. PC grabs two cigarettes is a mnemonic to remember all the drugs which are microsomal enzyme inducers. So what is the uh, full form for individual agents? PC, P is for phenytoin. C is for carbamazepine. The two basic anti-epileptic agents tend to be microsomal enzyme inducers. G is for griseofulvin. G is for griseofulvin. R is for rifampicin. A is for alcohol. B is for barbiturates. And barbecued meat. S is for St. John's wort. Two cigarettes, T and O. T is for troglitazone. O is for omeprazole. O is for omeprazole. And cigarettes is for cigarettes. Cigarettes itself is a microsomal enzyme inducer. Behaves as a microsomal enzyme inducer. Is that clear? Inhibitor that is perindopril. One important AC inhibitor is perindopril. Perindopril tend to protect diabetic kidney. Perindopril tend to protect diabetic kidney, which means it can be used for the treatment of, which means it can be used for the treatment of diabetic nephropathy. Used for the treatment of diabetic nephropathy. Is that clear, guys? The mechanisms is not been still known. Many books say certain mechanisms, but all these are hypotheses. So, uh, tocilizumab is going to be against interleukin-6 receptors and it is used only for juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Nadalizumab, remember, it is going to cause progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. It's an important adverse drug reaction because of nadalizumab. Nadalizumab is going to be opposing your uh, integrin antibody. It prevents the integration. It prevents the addition of cell molecules. And that dihydrofolate reductase is going to be inhibited is going to be inhibited by methotrexate and pimetrexate. Dihydrofolate reductase is inhibited by methotrexate and pimetrexate. Loading dose can be calculated as we have already seen that in uh, distribution itself. Initial plasma concentration into volume of distribution. Initial plasma concentration to volume of distribution is called as loading dose. And if at all, if the same drug is given by a peroral route, we have a factor which is limiting the uh, loading dose uh, uh, value to reach the blood, that is bioavailability. So if at all is given by a peroral route, we have to uh, divide it by capital F, which is nothing but the bioavailability of that drug. So once you reach the concentration above the uh, steady state, you have to maintain the concentration around steady state. That dose will be called as that dose will be called as maintenance doses. 
maintenance dose will be calculated as clearance into steady state into T half. Clearance into steady state into T half that is the volume for, uh, value for calculating the maintenance dose. Again if the same drug is given by a per oral route we have to decrease the value we have to uh, uh, divide the value with per oral bioavailability because it is a limiting factor in that. By normal gut flora which bacterium U bacterium lantum. We have a bacteria named as U bacterium lantum in your gut flora and this bacteria if it is present it decreases the absorption of digoxin. So, with it what is the take home point? If a patient is having diarrhea please do not prescribe him if the patient is already under treatment with the digoxin please do not prescribe him in a broad spectrum antibiotic because if you administer a broad spectrum antibiotic this antibi this bacteria is going to get killed. If this bacteria is going to get killed absorption of digoxin is going to be increased as more amount of absorption more amount of digoxin gains entry into your blood patient will land up in digoxin toxicity. Why do we have more amount of concern about the digoxin toxicity because this drug is a narrow therapeutic index drug. We have to maintain the concentration between 0.5 to 0.8 the alpha blocker hypertension is for remembering that this mnemonic is for hypertension lady L A is for lazins it is hydralazin D I or D Y is for dihydropyridins or dipins dihydropyridins chooses is for clonidin dolo D O is for dopa alpha methyl dopa L O is nothing but labetalol which is currently the drug of choice in treatment of pregnancy induced hypertension. Previously we had alpha methyl dopa but currently we have uh, labitol 100 milligrams can be administered. But we have certain classical features of this individual drugs. All these three drugs are contraindicated in pregnancy. We will be talking more about that in few minutes right. Contraindicated in pregnancy. Which drug is the shortest acting agent among these individual agencies? what it is going to do to the base is what is the components what is the uh, teratogenicity which can be expected. These drugs tend to produce fetal growth retardation, hypoplasia of organs, hypoplasia of organs and it might cause fetal death and it may cause fetal death because of these three different reasons these drugs are contraindicated in pregnancy. It might also cause renal damage in the fetus too clear. Now, among this renal damage we have one important point to be explained. It has, it has got certain additional property it tend to suppress neutrophil motility guys this question was asked previously and also it has got additional phospholipase A2 inhibitory property. I hope we have seen about that previously when we studied about steroids right I hope you remember that steroids has this capacity of inhibiting PLA2 endomethacin is similar to that mechanism of action it also inhibits the phospholipase A2 so, thereby it is going to uh, prevent the synthesis of arachidonic acid itself. At high doses it tend to uncouple oxidative phosphorylation. T half is going to be 2 to 5 hours in contrast to phenylbutosin which is around 60 hours. This is about 2 to 5 hours. Adverse effects most commonest one is frontal headache. Frontal headache is the most commonest one of endomethacin and uh, it might produce GI bleeding, hypersensitivity, aplastic anemia, renal damage even though the last two are very much rarer. The most commonest one which we can expect is frontal headache. So, closure of PDA yeah we all know that we use endomethacin around 70 percent is the success rate for endomethacin. It can also be used for barter syndrome and also in terms of acute gout. We have naproxen, we have uh, endomethacin both can be used for this condition. For ankylosing spondylitis also we can utilize endomethacin guys clear. Whenever this adrenal cyclase is going to get activated, it converts ATP to cyclic AMP. ATP triphosphate is converted to cyclic uh, adenosine monophosphate. This cyclic AMP in turn is going to cause production of protein kinase A, which further is going to cause many reactions. Most important reactions we are going to write down. It is going to cause cardiac muscle contraction beta 3, D1 like receptors, D2 like receptors. All these receptors are G protein coupled receptors. Guys. All these receptors of adrenergic or dopaminergic is going to be G protein coupled receptors. And how do you remember that? Remember this KISI QI yes, 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 I. 
Kisi is the mnemonic to remember the nature of individual receptors. GQ, GI, GS, 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 GI. Among this, the take home point is, even if the patient is having diabetic nephropathy with bilateral inartery stenosis, this drug should not be administered because even if we can give this drug for diabetic nephropathy, but uh, as there is going to be bilateral inartery stenosis, there is no use of giving this drug. 